And hello again, folks. It is I, Kamikaze, here to bring you more Sodium Files. Getting kind of into this game. Uh, auto save. Well, let's go with my save. It's interesting how it shows how big the file is. Not exactly sure why, but. Ah! I don't think I've ever loaded the game before. At least it's giving me a flashback of what's go what was going on. Oh, well, that's right. I have no eyeball. Is she over there? No, she's not over there. Okay. Ah! This thing was definitely designed for a controller in mind. Hey, me. Want to play a game? Sure, let's play I Spy. <laughs> I Spy with my little eyes. Someone who has one eye. I Spy something round. My eyeball. Correct. I win. <laughs> I will terminate you. Please do. After that joke, I would not blame you at all. Hi. My name is Kaname Date. Nice to meet you. What? Date? I have the same name. What a coincidence. <laughs> Perhaps he's had too much medication. Or not enough! Don't push yourself, Date. No, I'm fine, Date. You do not appear to be fine. Get back in my eye socket! There's me. It's unsettling to see yourself with a naked eye. Well, I suppose it's not the naked eye. My left eye, Aiba, is outside the socket, walking around. But whatever Aiba sees is sent to my optic nerve in my left eye socket. Her body and the terminal in the back of my eye socket are connected wirelessly. Amazing. Now what am I doing? Charging. What's charging? My eyeball? Iba, can you give me a timeline of the events of the crime? At once. Probably 5 p.m. Shogo's time. I timer. wonder who sent that Nile message to Mizuki. Probably the culprit themselves. But Mizuki wouldn't obey the instructions of a complete stranger. Then Mizuki knew the sender. That's what I'm thinking. Or the suspect used her friend's phone. Iba, can you hack into the phone and find out who sent the Nile message? But how? Well, whatever. I'm gonna let it do its thing. I'm confused on how that would work. Nile's security protocols are intricate. It will take time to decipher. Sure, it will. Iba is fitted and sent. Oh, God! I didn't even notice. That's Iba. That now makes sense on how I see my face. I'm freaking charging my eyeball with my car. The estimated time of death is yesterday, Friday, around 5 p.m. Sorry, my brain just, like, realized. Can you imagine seeing two different things with your eyes? I mean, as in, like... You're looking backwards and forward at the same time. How would one, like, uh, concentrate? That would seem, like, very difficult to... Well, then again, if the... If it, uh... The cause oh, of death is blood loss from multiple stab wounds to the torso. The weapon used to commit the murder is almost certainly the ice pick Mizuki was holding when we discovered her. There were no fingerprints, hair, or other clues left behind by the culprit. I mean, if this is how you see, well, one, I wouldn't be able to see the road, but it would make it a little bit more easy to deal with. The corpse was found tied up on one of the horses of the merry-go-round. This makes it clear that the killer had no intention of hiding their crime. So I'm just going to drive with this in front of my eyes. 
No one will ever notice if I. Bum, bum. Rather, it appears as though it was displayed deliberately. Our perp wants the limelight. Or is attempting to send some kind of message. The corpse was found with her left eye removed. I mean, that makes me think that they're after me because my left eye is a uh, little jelly bear down there. That eyeball has yet to be found. According to Iris's testimony, when Ota first discovered the body, the ice pick was still lodged in the left eye socket. So why did Mizuki have the ice pick? She heard something and wanted to defend herself? Heck if I know. Could she have taken the eye? That doesn't make any sense because the guy and her went there together and then... When we arrived on the scene, there was no blood on the horse the body was mounted upon. Which means the merry-go-round wasn't the murder scene. Shoko was killed somewhere else and then brought there to be displayed. That means Mizuki couldn't have done it. No, duh. <laughs> She's 12. She can't move a body or drive a car. Were you considering her a suspect? Consider everyone a suspect. That's part of the job. If there's even the slightest possibility. Then this is good news. It means the likelihood of Mizuki being the killer is almost zero. I knew that from the start. She would never put her hands on her own mother. But she didn't know that it was her mother, did she? I thought we covered that. She doesn't have what it takes to commit murder. Perhaps she was playing hide and seek. Does it look like she was playing hide and seek? Hide and seek? It was not a serious suggestion. I was merely joking, as you call it. Perfect time for that, isn't it? Yes, as a matter of fact. I checked the surveillance cameras around Bloom Park again. And I noticed something strange. Something strange? There are no turns on this road whatsoever. There were no cars. Yesterday, in the parking lot and the streets in the vicinity, there was not a single vehicle. Are you sure? I am. Then, how did the suspect move the corpse? Killed somewhere on the, uh, the park site. I have no idea. Saturday, 4.26 p.m. Police head quarters. Welcome back. I brought her here after her examination was over. Mizuki. Has she said anything? No, still can't talk. Was it okay for you to bring her here? Uh, no, but you did it anyway. Wait, whose birthday is it? I got permission from the hospital. Apparently, the hospital director has been poking a few of the nurses. Ha! Uh, <laughs> poking, quote-unquote. So I asked him about that, and all of a sudden he seemed very open to the idea. That's not permission, it's blackmail. And the difference is? Eh, same thing. You know what you need to do now, right? Dot, dot, dot. Sync with her. Excuse me now? Do what now? Well, um, let me just grab this cable and put... Oh, I was kidding about the cable, but...
Oh, look at his typing. That is so weird. Hey, Pewter. About Iba. Could you do something about her personality? Ooh, that's not gonna go well with your brain. Do something about it? It wouldn't kill her to be more modest. Maybe a little more ladylike? If you dare reprogram me, I will self-destruct in your eye socket. Oh, <laughs> you have a self-destruct. <laughs> oh, man, that just sounds so... Well, horrible for like the point three seconds that you're alive for it, but... Everyone else, that's going to be a really grody sight. Huh. So you were listening, huh? She's only 12. You sure this is okay? <laughs> the machine is safe. I can guarantee that. He is absolutely insane looking. You have nothing to worry about. Her vitals are stable. Her EEG is also stable. I think we can proceed. Strange strings of characters and figures scroll across the monitor. That doesn't look like Matrix look, that just looks like... No, oh, it's just the same thing everywhere. Oh, I can't poke at her ass. A CRT monitor. Haven't seen Dante, one of those in forever. Look. It's the girl from that horror movie coming out of the well. Ha. Huh. What the hell are you talking about? The ring? Because they have, you know, a horror movie running uh, in the background. Doesn't seem like there's anything of. Ooh, a door. The door to the sink room. Hey, boss! Renju Okiura is Mizuki's legal guardian. Did you get permission from him? I couldn't get in touch with him. What? I thought he was being questioned by a local unit. His questioning ended around noon. He hasn't been heard from since. Wait, what? Why would he... I don't know. You're asking me that now? I'm asking you to sync with Mizuki because we have no progress. Maybe Mizuki saw something at the scene. Maybe she went inside that merry-go-round to hide. That seems like a good idea. But she isn't answering any questions. The only way to find out is to dive into her subconscious mind. Don't you agree? If we don't do it now, then when? This is exactly the kind of situation Abyss was founded for. Besides, if you dive into Mizuki's subconscious, you may be able to help her. Her aphonia is psychogenic. Physically, she's fine. Her injuries are mental. Which is understandable after seeing her mother like that. You may be able to heal her, Date. You just have to sync with her. You're the only one who can. Boss is watching Mizuki through the glass. I'll try talking to her. She can't hear me from here. Because I'm an idiot. That's Pewter. His real name is Amanoma? Am Amanoma. But he goes by Pewter here. 36 years old. He's a member of Abyss, like me. He's a genius engineer that designed the sync system and other machines. He also inv invented Aiba. He's her caretaker, in a way. There's an enormous machine beyond the window. The machine is known as the sink machine. Yes, do I have to use that door now, or... 
the door to the sink room. How do me go? Me go over there now, yes? How does one use door? There's nothing on the monitor. Excuse me, how does one open door? Can I just leave? What about this door? The exit. A locker. Searching. Classic. Alternative. Progressive. Music? That's rock. A locker in the corner of the room. It looks like if I fully investigate something, it uh, turns gray. I opened it up. It's completely packed with books. Huh? They're all homoerotic BL manga and gay romance novels. Interesting, Pewter. Interesting. A metal shelf placed along the wall. Hey, CRT monitor. No one crawled out of it yet. Okay, what else have I not covered? A chair. Let's try investigating a chair. Just a chair. Mizuki is lying in the sink machine on the other side of the glass. Okay. There we go. Are you ready? We are ready to begin. Date, go to the sink room. Got it. Now we use door, yes? Agent Date, Mizuki is reacting. Her heart rate is rising and her brain waves are showing signs of disturbance. She may be getting nervous about the procedure. Date, try to calm her down. With what? A teddy bear? How do I do that? It's true that she can't speak to you, but she can hear you. Try talking with her. Sure thing, boss. About Abyss. Mizuki. I've never told you this, but I'm not an ordinary policeman. I belong to a special investigation unit called Abyss. Advanced Brain Investigation Squad. I'll be investigating your brain this evening. Please make sure that your trays are in the upright position and locked. We explore the human mind with state-of-the-art technology and research. There are a billion kinds of suspects and persons of interest out there. People that lie, people that don't say anything, people that have head injuries, or some that have deep mental wounds that keep them from talking. So, how do we get clues from these people? We have to get inside their heads. The truth is in their minds. Our job is to find it. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to be inside your head. I'll be looking for clues about the culprit. Not only that, we will also attempt to discover the cause of Mizuki's muteness and rectify it. With her aphonia cured, we can ask her further questions directly. Make it sound like that's going to be an easy task. Sure, let me just pour, perform digital brain surgery. I hope I don't lobotomize you this evening. About the sink gear. I know it looks scary, but trust me, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's no pain, no side effects. When this is all over, you'll go back to your regular life like this never happened. Unless there's a power surge. Sink. Sinking is what we call diving into someone's subconscious mind. You sink deep down into their psyches and you synchronize with their true selves. People like me are called sinkers. <laughs> you know, people that aren't me are called floaters. Sinkers enter the subject's subconscious, which is a dreamlike state we call somnium. It's Latin for dream. There are six sinkers at Abyss. I'm one of them. When this is all over, Hey, Mizuki. 
When this is all over, what should I say? Let's go to an amusement park. When this is all over. What, do you want me to type something or... Oh. Hmm. I actually get to make choices. I hate making choices. But the rule is left is always right, except for when right's the only thing left. Hey, remember when we went last time? You were laughing about how it looked like throw up? Oh god, yeah, that's gonna really get her to want to go. But it tasted so good. You were devouring it. You kept saying it looked awful, but you loved it. Do you not have a more heartwarming story, or...? No, this is it. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at this. Date, her heart rate is steadying. EEG is stable. Well, I'm glad that worked. Date, get into position. Let's begin. I wonder if I can get a game over oh, by doing something Special wrong. Agent. I forgot to mention one thing. I added a new feature to the sync system. You can now surf the web at any time using our 12G technology. A new feature. You'll learn more when you're synced. It's very useful. Sure, got it. Let's dive into uh, the virtual world. You ready? Sword Art Online. Okay. Ready anytime. Remember, Date, you have only six minutes in the Somnium world. Any longer, and your consciousness will be absorbed by the subjects. Are yeah, you telling me I that I only have six minutes to Find do this? Lead and get out in under six minutes. We're counting on you. If this has a timer, I'm totally boned. Oh, isn't this delicious? Look at my butt. What was that? Nothing. I was merely trying to enter the scene like a cybernetic assassin from the future. Really? Like the Terminator? Well, if you're trying to do that, you'd have to do it naked. Oh! Is this Bloom Park? Lightning in a birdcage. Maybe this is representative of Mizuki's state of mind. The fact that Shoko was killed here must weigh heavily on Mizuki's heart. Mizuki should be inside that column. To get the information we need, we will have to deal with the lightning and the cage and get to Mizuki. Move fast, or time is going to run out. You've wasted like an entire minute already. Necessary. Look around. Look around? This is the new feature of sync that Pewter mentioned. You can stop time? Only when standing still. Time is moving incredibly slowly. Currently, you and I are transmitting information at high speed. So it only appears as though time has stopped. Are you familiar with the concept of time dilation? It has to do with relativity, right? Two people can experience time differently depending on space-time. This is similar to that. Just like if one of you has to go to work for eight hours and I go to sleep for eight hours, your work is over and it took no time at all. For me. The flow of time in Somnium is different than the real world. This could be useful. No. You can only stay in Somnium for six minutes, right? But that's only standing still. Is moving my mouth counting? But with this, you could take your time and explore. Let's get started. Somnium scan. Activate. Please, for the love of God, don't make me have to move around.
Mental lock number one. One, one. Mental lock number two. Two, two, two. Mental lock number three. Three. Well, there she is, so I'm assuming that's it. Mizuki is mute. By healing her mental wounds, you may be able to get some important info. To reach Mizuki, something must be done about the lightning that keeps striking the birdcage. Lightning's supposed to strike at the highest point. Oh, God. Hmm? Horses are, like, spazzing out. An ice pick piercing Shoko's photograph. Aiba, the speaker over there. It's shaking. Hmm. I see. It must be connected to the ice pick. I'd question that if it wasn't a fact that we're in someone's mind. And everything's moving. It's not frozen right now, so we're counting down, right? Healing Mizuki should be your top priority. I know. Oh my god, not a time limit. Whenever Aiba is moving or performing an action. Pay attention to remaining time left in the upper right of the screen. Unlock all mental locks within 360 second time limit. I'm not doing anything. Oh, it just moves really slowly. An ice pick stabbed into Shoko's photograph. Okay, now that that's like paused there. Um, I'm going to call this episode here so we can start fresh with this glorious bullshit time limit. Uh, thank you all for watching, and just as normal, do all the things that help me out of the subscribing part and saying hello on our Discord, and I'll see you in the next one.